so. So. Get a nice little notebook there. Yeah, it's my blue notebook. Well, it's for work, but I got, I put in my notes in there too. So I got all my notes and they're broken up and they don't make any sense. And yeah, so Starship Troopers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do that all. Oh, we thing. weren't recording? Yeah, I like to just kind of surprise you and hit record at a point. Oh, no. Oh, I thought you, because you got up and you said, okay, let's start this. I was like, oh, you didn't record? I felt like that was perfect, actually. It was perfect. Oh, okay. Until cool. now. <laughs> oh, no. We're going to leave it all in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul Danino Braun. And I'm Dave. And this is On the Rocks, a conversational podcast about movies. Yes. Uh, we've been taking it kind of slow with doing like retro reviews kind of stuff. And we picked one that I, I kind of wanted to watch for a long time. I've rewatched for the longest time. It's like one of your favorite movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's from one of my favorite directors. I have a very, very big, bloody, probably nude, soft spot for Paul Verhoeven. He's he's got like a really wide range of films and they're all like they all have that same like tone. Yeah, well, you but, know, it's it's funny to say a wide range because whenever I think of Paul Verhoeven, I think of honestly one of the best personally, I think most underrated sci fi directors in recent time. Like he's. Like, I think of Total Recall, and I think of Starship Troopers, and I think of Robocop, Robocop, and I'm like, those are some really good, really smart science fiction movies, but... And there's another one, right? Didn't Hollow Man and Basic Instinct. Well, hey, Basic Instinct, despite what you say, <laughs> it's still like, yeah, no, know. they know what it Showgirls. is. Showgirls! Oh. Man, everybody got A's and shit. <laughs> Truth fact, that is my favorite quote in any piece of art ever but then he has his other stuff from before the hollywood days with with him and rucker hauer he did like two movies back to back which i really want to see that apparently really good i forgot what they're called and he did what is it the black not the black book but the book thief or something like that which is apparently like a world war ii movie that's like intense yes yeah, it's, it's, it's like the yeah that one Oh, uh, Black Book, yeah. Black oh, Book. Oh, it is a Black That's Book. somewhat recent. Well, if memory serves, he was like... Oh, he did Ellie, too. I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, that was intense. And that's something completely different than anything he's done before. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like, I always wonder, like, what is he up to? Because he doesn't really do much anymore. Well, Ellie was... It was I sort of mainstream. It was nominated for... Uh, Best actress at I think it was the Golden Globes or something. Yeah, you know I do remember hearing about this. Yeah. Huh. Well, oh. I will. I will have to check that out. Yeah, then. just check that out. But yeah, he's he's really great, and I don't know. He did he do Flash Gordon? Is that Flash? No, that's Flesh Flesh and, and Blood. Blood. Oh, okay. <laughs> Flash Gordon would definitely be a. Uh... <laughs> A weird little aside in this gentleman's career. <laughs> but it would go along with the, the sci-fi stuff. <laughs> wow, apparently of all the films he's directed, Starship Troopers is his personal favorite. And I have to say, watching it, rewatching it again, I really, I really enjoyed it for most of the movie. And then it got like, because it's two hours long, but it... it <sighs> It has this thing where it like it does it perfectly where it breaks up their lives in three different pieces. Yeah. It's like the beginning, the middle and like kind of the end. Yeah. And like that's where my problem is, is like the end part where it's like it doesn't really because they still look all young and stuff. But like, yeah, Denise Richards is like a great pilot now. And like she rose through the ranks or whatever. Yeah. And Rico's becoming a better soldier. And uh, Neil Patrick Harris is a psychic Nazi. Yes, I have that in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, most of the stuff, I think I noticed it the most was, I think it was towards when the rock hit, hit uh, 
Buenos Aires. And then yes, the you can't see it, everybody. I'm doing air quotes. The rock yeah. hit Buenos Aires. The asteroid. And oh no, you, I don't. I don't think that actually was a rock. That's what I was getting. It was at. a boulder. <laughs> but later. But um. Oh no! What I was insinuating is, you know what? Fine. We'll, we'll get into fan theories as to what I think actually happened in Starship Troopers because I think there's a whole other layer of stuff going on. Oh, you think that it was set up or something? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I I don't. I think that that is in the narrative, dude. Like, I don't think that that's like even that big of a conspiracy theory. The only reason why I disagree is because they give us a scene where they blatantly see a rock coming out of just like the ether coming at uh, uh, the ship. Uh, out of the bug's butt. Yeah. I do agree. And then it showed, and then like they're trying to like get. Yeah. Y- yeah. I don't, but you know, before we get into our, our review of, of all this excellentness, why don't we quick uh, hit whatever story, not story bits, whatever news things we want to go over. And I didn't. I didn't look. <laughs> I didn't know any news. No, there's no news. I didn't see anything. Oh, God, why? Well, you know, we have the whole Avengers movie coming out. That's that's dangerously soon. Can't wait. Curiously, I haven't seen a whole lot of Hawkeye in anything. Or Ant-Man. Or Ant- well, Ant-Man might be there. Well, no, they're in. they're listed. On no, no, that. I know they're... More than obviously, they're going to be in the movie. It's just weird that they haven't been in any Anything. promotional material at all. It's been a lot of Doctor Strange, like a lot of Doctor Strange. Everyone's and favorite. Everyone's favorite. He's he's <laughs> no, he's good. He's, he's good. good. This is this is just kind of a shitty movie. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I well, you know what? Somebody had to say it, but <laughs> but he's great. Um. And then there's a lot of uh, Iron Man. And, well, yeah. yeah, there's a reason. Dollar bills, y'all. And, dollar, dollar bills. Well, and Black Panther. Extra dollar bills. Yeah. On top of the already. But they said that apparently Thor um, and Thanos have the most screen time, apparently. Yeah. Was, Something like that. Um, What I saw is that basically... Um, the Rooster Brothers said they were almost treating this movie like a Thanos origin story. Okay. Like they were really, you know, I guess they're really trying to fix the whole Marvel movie villain thing where a lot of them tend to be bland or rushed or yeah. whatever. And he only wants to kill half the half the universe. You know what? I don't blame him. <laughs> like half the universe? You know, that's pretty conservative. Yeah. All and, things considered. And then what? He rules over the, the other ones. It's like he's very unclear. <laughs> so, <laughs> sir, what do you do with the remaining half? Do we get sandwiches? Well, we, I guess we'll rule them. Maybe. Ha- oh, and ham. Ham sandwiches. <laughs> do you feel uncomfortable with ham being that it is dangerously close to the color of your skin, sir? I'm purple. <laughs> what kind of ham are you eating? <laughs> Bad ham. <laughs> well, like, I, I don't know. I, I. I think that's it's gonna be. I hope it's gonna be a fucking awesome. It could it could be a terrible piece of shit, but who knows? So far, they've had a great track record. Uh, record. Can you imagine it comes out and it's just awful? Oh, I would cry. <laughs> that I would cry. that might be the biggest betrayal ever. That would be the end. It it probably would. Speaking of the end <laughs> and things coming out being terrible. I finally, I finally sat down and watched uh, Justice League the other day. Oh no! I told you not to. And you did, you, and you did it anyway. I, we didn't listen. You didn't listen. Um, yeah, it's not good. What an awful piece of shit that was. You know, it's funny. So, like, I watched it, and it wasn't like it was aggressively bad. It was just. Very, very mediocre. It's and so uninteresting. Yeah, that's the thing. And like, that's almost worse. Yeah, for me, because like Suicide Squad is an abortion on a train fire. Like, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's so bad. And you know me, I'm, 
you like to say I'm the Zack Snyder. You, you are though. Uh, well, well, clearly I'm not because. Well, no, that's not, not true good. because it's half and half here. No, it's not half. This movie, I actually would rather watch Suicide Squad than Justice League because Suicide Squad is terrible, thus making it interesting. Whereas Justice League is like somebody ate an entire bucket of like vanilla cream and then farted. It's so bland. It's yeah. It's I mean like it's it's beige wallpaper. Like it's yeah. I also <laughs> feel like there were only two action set pieces in the entire thing. Three if you count that whole sequence with Superman. But like in the end, yeah. And what else? <laughs> the, 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 the sewer thing in the end, and just I don't oh know. yeah, the sewer thing. Oh, I guess you can count the sequence that had none of the heroes in it. Yeah, on, oh, in, the in, Amazon. The mascara, yeah. yeah. I thought you said mascara. <laughs> I'm not mascara. Maybe they're born by Avalon. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, that was that was an awful piece of shit, and we shouldn't spend our time with it. And instead, review and talk about a great sci-fi cult movie called Starship Troopers. In every age, there is a cause worth fighting for. But in the future, the greatest threat to our survival will not be man at all. Hey, kid, what's going on? War! We're going to war! Now, the youth of tomorrow must travel across the stars to defend our world. We are a generation commanded by fate to defend humankind. Everyone fights, no one quits. We are going in with first wave. You smash the entire area. You kill anything that has more than two legs. You get me? We get you, sir. But they will face an enemy more devastating than any ever imagined. Here it comes! We need retrieval now. Someone made a damn mistake. No! The bugs laid a trap for us, didn't they? Ah! TriStar Pictures takes you to the front lines of the next frontier. Kill them all! Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers, oh, I love that colon, place. the quest to sever a limb from Michael Ironside. That's what happens in every movie. Uh, it, too many. I almost think it, that must have been a running joke with Paul Verhoeven, where it's like, hey, remember how we cut off both of your arms in, uh, <laughs> in Total Recall? Well, we have, um, we have, what's his name? He comes in, who's another, like, kind of mainstay. Well, not real. Was he in another one? I just know that he was in Total Recall. Dean Norris. You just made me realize that fucking Clancy Brown is in this movie. Yes, I have. <laughs> do we love this Clancy is Brown? The Clancy Brown review podcast, where all we do is Clancy Brown. That's it. Next week, Shawshank. The week after that, SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> but like, did you know that like? Dean Norris was like close to their like him and uh, what's his name Casper Van Dien were like. Close I assume that Dean Norris came out of the womb bald and forty five. Oh God! I know he's in. Uh, I think he's in either um, Lethal Weapon two or three. I'm not sure which one it is, but he looks the same. Oh, he he was in an old episode of X Files, yeah. like season like three or something, and yeah, he looks he looks the same. <laughs> Jesus, but. No, it's just this movie really like struck a chord with me. I watched it back in high school. My friend, he uh, he got it for me in we had very different viewing experiences, different though. ways, and I I only heard of the movie once. I don't I don't know how, 
but I always wanted to see it because it just looked cool. I saw the you're looking at the yeah. little poster on a uh, IMDb. My DVD copy does not look like that. It's just like I it's... actually picked up the steel book, the 4K steel book, just for this podcast. Oh, I was gonna get that. It's, it's beautiful. It's very very Nazi. Well, yeah, very. We'll get, <laughs> we'll get into that and yeah. why that's actually uh, important. And I hesitate to say a good thing, but it makes sense in the context of the movie. You should see my DVD cover. It's just like the ships in space, but then like a bug arm oh, grabbing it. Oh, God, yeah, that's it's terrible. It's the stupidest thing. That terrible poster. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Starship Troopers is about humans in a fantastic militaristic future doing battle with giant alien bugs in a fight for survival. Based on a book. Yes. Based on a, a right-wing conservative book. And you look at it. And that totally makes sense. Yeah, although I don't think that that was... Uh, well, no, that was... The intention is certainly not to glorify. No. I mean, it is and it isn't. It's it's very interesting. So my... Obviously, there's multiple ways to, uh, to, to read any work. There's the surface level, just what is the story about. Then there's like the meta level. Yeah. And what Starship Troopers on the surface level is, is just the stupidest... <laughs> <laughs> Stupidest, most jingoistic fuck war movie ever. I, I mean, like, they're just like, yeah, war solves everything. And then, like, there's a guitar riff and somebody fucking shoots a person in the fucking face. Like, it's just so raw, raw, conservative. Yay, guns. Everything is awesome. Well, there's, there's a scene. I have it in my notes. Where it's... It's like one of the second like propaganda pieces where would you like to know more? Yeah. <laughs> where it's all the all the kids are like in this park and all the troopers are out there and they're yeah. like fighting over the gun or whatever yeah. and they're handing them out bullets like it's just like yeah. little gifts and stuff like that. I mean the movie is literally in its structure a propaganda film. It is like a recruitment video. But like See, the thing is, like, you have those, like, goofy, like, little breaks of yeah. those things. But, like, in the world that they live in, it's not goofy to them. Yeah. It's just, like, another, like, oh, we got to get the war effort going, you know? it's Buy a war bonds! Yeah, it's, it's a great 20, 21, 7, you know, 2100 next to 1940s like yeah. it's a great like <laughs> the 1940s were in the future kind of thing yeah it's just perfect like that so you know but there's, a, there's this great moment when you first watch it where if you're paying attention you realize oh my god uh this is a uh, fascistic government yeah and they win fascism wins in starship troopers yeah and that's because uh, on you know the the subtextual level Starship Troopers is a parody of propaganda films, but the way it chooses to satirize propaganda films is by actually being one. Yeah. Which I think is fucking fantastic. I think that's a pretty bold move on his part. Yeah. <laughs> to just straight, like, I don't know if you've ever seen, were you in documentary with me in college? No, I don't. Okay, well, have you ever seen Triumph of the Will? No. All right, so... As weird as it is, there's this um, this Nazi propaganda film called Triumph of the Will, which, Paul, why are you watching a Nazi propaganda film? Context, yeah, why? <laughs> con context is important. <laughs> context. Um, obviously, when they released it, yeah, it's a, it's a horrible Nazi propaganda film where there are parades and all this stuff. But if you're watching it today, you're watching it through the lens of being aware that it is a work of propaganda. And as a work of propaganda, it's fucking awesome. Like, it's terrifying, the power that they show and, like, just the huge fucking parades and everything. So that's how we watch it now. We watch it as, like, look at how this person, this director, was able to construct all this stuff to rile everyone up and get everyone excited. And that's what this is. Starship Troopers is... Is Triumph of the Will with alien bugs and tits. Yeah. But they do like this thing where it's like they glorify they glorify war. It's like, oh, you know, guns and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, it's but the only way to be a citizen in this society. But there's this little weird thing. I don't know if you caught on to it. But there's the scene in the propaganda things where, like, they show, like, a cow and it's being ripped apart, but it's, like, censored. 
But then right <laughs> after that, they have like coming up at nine prisoners sent to die full full viewing at nine. It's like that's OK. But seeing a cow getting ripped apart is like totally not yeah. cool. Also, I mean, let's be real. That sensor bar was you could still see horrible things. Happen. No, no, you could still see horrible things, but, <laughs> but like the fact that they put it in there, but then yeah. like afterwards, it's like, oh, you could see this actual human now get Die. put to yeah. death. Yeah. Wonder what his crime was. The, probably nothing. I, probably not. Who knows? <laughs> probably yeah. nothing at all. Uh, but there's so many brilliant, distinct choices. I mean, down to the costuming. I mean, Neil Patrick Harris is, He's literally a Nazi at the end. Like his yeah, uniform, it, like it's like how Star Wars ripped all that World War II stuff right out, just put in there. Like this was more blatant. Yeah, this was yeah definitely more blatant. <laughs> well, just like everything, it like it came really apparent to me at like towards the halfway marker where it's like okay, this is like it's just getting straight ripped off at this point. Like even not. Not just the the regular little pieces that pop up in the in the beginning in the middle. It's just like everything now is. It's like, oh, okay, you really want to go full circle with this now. It's like it's not little stuff, and it's like it's full on. It's like there's no way to not interpret this as the you know yeah yeah. But yeah, it's it's an incredible piece of satire. This. And RoboCop. The RoboCop really... is more like subtle, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just my brain cut to Kenny being blown a fucking apart. <laughs> no, but like subtle. No, but more like. <laughs> no, no, I know with what with what it's trying to trying to say, say. About consumerism and yeah. stuff, and you know, Total Recall being the whole swipe at ultra violence in American culture and yeah. stuff. Like Starship Troopers is literally like it's wearing it like on its sleeve. It's putting it out there that this is what yeah. it is. And if you don't get it, then you're kind of st stupid or you're actually bought into it already. Yeah. There, there must've been a certain sect of people who saw this and only understood the face value of it and probably walked away being like, yeah, bro, the movie's awesome. It's so violent, bro. And it's like, they didn't even realize. It's just like a dumb action movie to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like a dumb jingoistic action movie with yeah. the most pretty slash vapid people. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have to bring that up. Um, casting is perfect in this movie. I think, yeah, the casting is perfect in this movie. And you know what? I don't think Denise, like Denise Richards and Casper Van Dien were pretty solid. They are. I mean, like, they're not bad at all. Like, everybody gives them, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pe people like to make fun of them and everything, but, but no. compared to what we've seen in a Highlander. Oh, <laughs> God. There's a level of talent there, at least, in, in here, in Starship Troopers with Denise Richards and Casper Van Dien. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would imagine on some level they had to be privy to what it is they were doing i would i would hope that verhoven didn't lie to them and just cast them because they're both immensely attractive you know aryan looking people which is another thing they're in brain uh buenos aires oh yeah that was 100 percent a choice because in the book yeah uh, his name is johnny rico and they're in buenos aires and and he's Filipino. i saw on the imdb thing and he was apparently filipino or something what the character yeah yeah but well, Cas his name's casper you can't get more white than that but also yeah jesus yeah <laughs> pale as anything but like no like i think in the context of what the world is supposed to be at this point yeah and i think it was a deliberate choice See, this is one of those instances where I think the whitewashing is a statement in and of itself. Yeah. It is a criticism. It is like part of the satire. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. But I don't think it was much more like back then. Maybe it wasn't like so big, like everything else about that. They yeah, were satirizing. Yeah. It was bigger. Yeah. Now it's more of a factor. Definitely. Yeah. I wonder, like, this movie comes out today. I wonder how it plays. I feel like this is one of those variances that this would, if you if you release this today and you didn't change a thing, I think it could still work. I think it might actually work better 
<laughs> I think just, this might work better now. If you just keep... Yeah, if you keep, like, the actors the same, what happens, and just update, like, the effects, because most of the effects don't hold up. I don't know how 4K looked, but I have one instance where... Well, I think the practical effects look well, great. Well, e the bug effect at the end, the big brain bug thing at the end... Yeah, with look, its poo -gina. Yeah, it looked great. Not that. <laughs> I was wondering what I'm talking about. Um... <laughs> The special effects people basically said when they were constructing the mouth of the brain bug, they wanted it to be a cross between a anus and a vagina, and that's why it looks like that. <laughs> but the face, the front of the creature looks fantastic. It's a great practical effect. Yeah, I think Studio ADI did the effects, and they're awesome. And some of the arachnids look great, too. Yeah, because they did a decent amount practically. Like, they did more of this movie practically than you would have expected. I think, really, they did CGI when they had to. Well, there was one effect that I saw that I wrote down that was fucking awful. Which one? It was... I don't know what the case was, but it was when Carmen first gets onto the, to the bridge of the ship, and they go to warp drive, and it's just like a still image that's kind of stretched out and then plucked right in. It looked yeah. awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are you going to do? But no, like, you look at, like, all the other stuff, and it's like, I guess they ran out of money. Yeah. And it's just... They spent all of their money on bloods and <laughs> blood and ammo. Because then you look at, like, the biology scene, like, at the very beginning where they have all yeah, the bugs dude. and they're pulling out all the organs and stuff. Can we just, like, address, like, practical effects just are great. Like, yeah. like just to see the slime and the actors actually reacting and... Denise Richards throwing up. Throwing like it's up. Just, it's fucking great. Oh, apparently the movie's set in the year 2197. Yeah. That's what I said. Well, 2100 something. Yeah, you said 20, Yeah. I don't know. know specifically. I don't recall them referencing it. In no, but it just... It, it's futuristic. No, it's I know more, it's futuristic, yeah. but a lot of times with these futuristic movies, they don't necessarily tell us... And that's the thing. There's like a lot of like underlying things where it's like... It seems like there's something happening like underneath. It's like no more this fascist government, like because like his father's like you know ah screw that guy. You don't have to you know go off and die or whatever. Yeah. And then the news reporter is kind of like can't he didn't say it, but it's like it's mostly in his tone. It's like can't we all just get along kind of thing? Like isn't there a peaceful solution for the bugs? And Johnny Rico just comes up to the camera. He's like fucking kill them all. <laughs> Like, there's some something there that's, like, seeding up, that's, like, leading to something more in their universe that I find pretty interesting. Um, Do you know what I mean, though? Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, no, there's also, like, little world-building things, and it's crazy, like, watching it again, there's so many things that you pick up on, like, all of the fucking, literally, all of the adults who have citizenship not talking about like their characters, parents and stuff who were yeah. almost portrayed as these like pansy, like, meh, meh, meh. Yeah. but like the adults who have citizenship who serve, they're all fucked. They're all up. fucked. They're all missing limbs or yeah. blind or horribly scarred. It's like, Jesus Christ. Well, like literally what Michael Ironside says in the classroom is basically it comes down to this. Like if you got to get maimed and brutally injured and you got to... Injure your soldiers to make a point. And it's all about violence. It's like... Violence solves everything. It's everything. basically the, the moral of Starship Troopers. Yeah. What would the founding of the fathers of Hiroshima say? Probably nothing. We blew them up. Yeah. My point, exactly. Yeah. It's just like whatever... However... Whatever we need to do to win the day doesn't matter as long as we beat the shit out of somebody. Yep. If 7,000... People have to die. Fine, fuck them. And that's what brings to your, I guess your, consp your conspiracy theory about the, about I, the movie. I, I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. I don't think it's a big leap given the context of this government to say that. I'm pretty sure that in the world of Starship Troopers, in the actual narrative, that. Buenos Aires is just a false flag operation. I think they fucking blew it up themselves. Because let's be real. Yes, it shows the bugs shooting like plasma things off of their planet. Well, no, it shows the, the rock coming out of like 
like a wormhole basically and then the ship has to dive and it like breaks off or whatever and then yeah i just feel like what are the like listen we get there and they're basic and they did stupid fucking bug but, but they also showed in the beginning in the very beginning that they have oh we got cannons that can shoot out the rocks from space when those be operational are we becoming a conspiracy theorist uh, podcast no, now? No, but for... I actually have something to throw at you for, <laughs> as far as conspiracy theories. Oh, God. <laughs> this one, I don't know if it's uh, if there's any real validity to it, but it was interesting. Somebody pointed it out to me. Um, so remember in The Dark Knight? <laughs> yeah. Coleman Reese, the guy who figures out that Bruce Wayne is Batman yeah. with relative ease and then like threatens basically like to blackmail him. Yeah. My phone on. Think about the guy's name. Coleman Reese. He's Mr. Reese, right? Okay. Say it. Oh. You think he's the Riddler? Just say his name. Mist Mystery. Mr. Reese. <laughs> I don't know, man. Somebody pointed that out and I I, don't before, know. I think he just stretched now. <laughs> before the Dark Knight Rises, I would have been like, that's a stretch. But after what he pulled with the whole Robin thing, I'm like, you know what? Like, that very well could have been a choice. Like, that could have been just a sly little wink wink at the audience. Maybe. Listen, it's just it's just interesting. But yeah, no, I definitely think that the government of Starship Troopers blew up Buenos Aires in order to keep because people need a war. And if it's just a government you know like you need to like the whole thing is based on fucking conquering and military and, yeah. rah, rah, rah. and like when you don't have an enemy left on this planet anymore all right let's go over here and shoot a bunch of fucking bugs like we literally invaded their home world yeah. set up shop and then just started fucking shit up for them yeah i i mean definitely <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden that theory holds water it makes sense. It totally yeah. makes sense. I don't know. This whole movie just gets a lot more interesting when you realize also that Paul Verhoeven grew up in Nazi occupied Netherlands too. Yeah. And also that Amy Smart was in it. She was. She was the little co pilot lady. Yeah, she's briefly in it. Yeah. 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 All of a sudden it's like, oh, I know her. It's, and then she's gone. It's Amy Smart from Crank and Just Friends. <laughs> just Friends. Oh, God. I wonder if that's picking up on the microphone. It might. It'd be nice. Do you want to go get ice cream? Actually, yeah. You do owe me lunch. I do. All right. So anyway, uh, oh, I, I haven't written down my notes. Would you like to know more? <laughs> I like that. I, I love it's like a computer screen or something like that. Like you're just clicking different tabs. Yeah, because it's almost like you're at a recruitment center. Yeah. Um, And that's like another thing. Like, it's so intense, their training and stuff. Yeah, I love that this is like a training movie. Like, it follows these people's respective careers and, like, the different yeah. paths that they choose from high school to training and how brutal the fucking training is. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I do like the scene, like, where they're explaining why they got into, into the service to begin with. Like, the one girl she wants to like have babies the other one wants to go into politics the other one wants to be like a journalist or a writer he said this is the co-ed shower scene yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like it's directed a in the nude by it, paul hero <laughs> but it's like a weird like that's first of all it's a weird time to yes. set up all that but i like it's very personal and intimate on like two different like yeah like they're both revealing their actual secrets and, and their, their bodies. Yeah. yeah. And almost it, it's something interesting. It's almost like they desexualized. They've been desexualized by, the, by this yeah. world. It's like, it's yeah, you like guys, whatever. All of you guys are the same. It doesn't matter now. Huh? Yeah. You're, oh, all yeah you're all just a giant homogenous meat grinder. They show that in the beginning with everybody in the in formation. And it's like they're doing your, their part and little Jimmy's doing yeah. his part. You know, in a way, this future pretty progressive. Doesn't seem sexist. Doesn't seem racist. Everyone is treated the same. You have like co-ed uh, football. Oh shit! You're yeah, right. Diz is like the quarterback. For I forgot that, that completely went over my head. Yeah, 
So are you saying <laughs> that in a way fascism <laughs> is aggressive <laughs> as fuck? Caitlyn Jenner can use any bathroom or shower. She can swing dong in there. It's fine. It's great. Let's freeze ourselves and wake ourselves up in 2197. Yeah, or the only bad thing is the whole, you know, you've got Neil Patrick Harris and, and the psychic Nazis in space. Persuading you how to think and where to go. That's all. Oh, that's what that meant on the back of my notes. By the way. One of my favorite random pieces of movie trivia, for some reason, I always remembered the name of Neil Patrick Harris's ferret from Starship Troopers. It's Cyrano. I don't know why. <laughs> Just th that that always stuck with me. But like that that was the thing where like he's 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 teaching Rico how to be psychic or like yeah. seeing if he is or something. And it's like, oh, can you do that to humans? And he's like, no, I can't do it to humans yet. But like the way he said it is not like in a funny kind of ha ha way like it's no that's my goal <laughs> yes definitely ominous it's interesting how he fucking well obviously we spend the least amount of time with him he's the one who like becomes the superstar and yeah. everything but there's there's something else that i kind of want to add to your conspiracy about oh, like everything yes, add it. okay so michael ironside he knows johnny rico when they go to his platoon it's like obvious that like, he wants him to keep going to be better or whatever. Yeah. And he gets the corporal position because he blows up the bug like Luke Skywalker or whatever. You know, like, he opens up, yeah. like, a little piece and then throws that, a bomb that in there. That fucking awesome. Yeah, that was cool. But there is a scene, and tell me if you remember this, where they're walking through the canyons or whatever, and the one guy gets picked off. Yeah. Michael Ironside totally set that guy up to die. Yeah. Yeah. Because he looked at like, it was all like the falling rocks or whatever. Yeah, it was with the flying bugs. Yeah. And Michael Ironside is like, something's going on up there. I know it's something bad. I don't like this guy who's working for me. I want Johnny Rico to be my number two now. I'm going to set this guy up and kill him. Yeah. Fuck it. Do you like? <laughs> I, I, you know, honestly, yeah, I, I totally, totally buy it. Yeah, and you know what's funny is like it goes back to the thing about talking about how, like you know there's the world building and like you feel like there's all this other stuff going on in the background that you aren't necessarily privy to. Yeah, I would have loved to just see what the fuck happened at that base with like the brain bug, and like because they insinuate. I remember when I first watched it as a kid, I was like, oh, okay, that person at the computer chair with the hole in their head, they must have gotten attacked by the brain bug. But not realizing, dude, the brain bug's fucking huge. There's no reality where that thing got in there and drank his brain and whatever. So they kind of insinuate that there is an unseen bug in this movie that is a smaller type parasite thing that gets into your brain and controls you. It's not the uh, those other like roach kind of bugs. They're like the little ones. No, no, no. It, it, it's just something that's insinuating and ironically enough. It's expanded upon in the second film, oh, God. which is fucking horrible. Is it, is it dog shit? It's like a horror movie in one location. Uh, it's so bad. Never. It's so bad. <laughs> like, good damn. <laughs> Completely missed the point of what Starship Trooper was, was about. Damn. Not, I mean, the third movie understood and tried to get back to it, but was also really bad. Um, but yeah, like, you just get the, the vibe that an entire goddamn movie happened at that outpost, like, all of the thing. Yeah. And then, like, you just see the aftermath. And there's something kind of awesome, like, that this world keeps going when you're not there. Yeah, that's that's why it's really good and you and you can see that too with where they jump from it's like you see the progression of denise richards and doing her thing and you cut to sometimes to see uh neil patrick harris and like the little videos or stuff yeah and it's like you gotta shoot him here and you gotta do this you know stuff like that it's like stuff is always going around people are like moving up and like going to different places there's always something happening some kind, yeah yeah and it keeps going and the movie it really it's on a really great pace for most of it 
And I feel like yeah, it's it's it's, it's very well paced. I would say. I think until the scene where the ship gets blown up and Carmen and the other guy they crash into the thing. I felt like at that point everything gets rushed along yeah. for no reason and then it has like a somewhat ending. It's like the brain bug's not behind it all cuz they're on like a different planet from where they started from. Yeah, well I mean well that's also that kind of harkens back to the whole war is it, pointless. It's yeah. just a distraction. Yeah. And it's just like, this is just another like battle. It's not like the end of the war or anything. It makes it out to seem like it is. Well, I don't think this movie works if the war ends because the war can't end for them. No. Well, yeah. that's, that's why they keep going from one planet to another. That's, yeah. what it, that's what they make it out to be anyway. Yeah. But like, it's such a non-ending. And it works to its favor, but it's also kind of unsatisfying for See, the it, audience. It, it works more for the satire and less for the film. Yeah. Like, it works for the satire of, like, well, yeah, of course the war's not over because there the, the needs to be another war. Like, it's, oh, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, a propaganda movie without a war is, what's the fucking point? Yeah. And you can't make another sequel to it, you know, necessarily, because then it, like, diminishes what they're saying in the first one it, which is funny because they made four <laughs> but they're just, that's just like money reasons it's like and it and they are bad anyway so it's yeah. like they knew yeah it but it comes down to like how much more can you say it's like it's wrapped up in a nice neat bow the only thing that's left out is like something satisfying for everybody else yeah. Because the surface level, like, everybody's like, oh, it's like a cool, violent movie or whatever. And maybe they think it's like, oh, that's the end. You know, they got the thing and it's over. Yeah. But, but it's like anyone paying attention be like, what did they get? They just yeah. scared this giant monster thing in its own home. Yeah. It's afraid. Of course it's afraid. <laughs> yeah. You're shooting off guns and stuff. The sticking things in its vagina puss or whatever. Pugina. It's Pugina. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's crazy. When that movie was made at the time, it used more fake blood and more fake ammunition than any movie before it. I believe the amount is it used like 17 gallons of fake blood for shooting. And I was going to say, like, at the when they're doing like uh, they're fighting off all the arachnids at the base or whatever. Like, it's just constantly just gunfire. Just, like... The amount of gunfire in this movie is insane. It's nuts. Also, just... This movie, even by today's standards, is so fucking violent. Yeah, it's violent. Because it's, it's absurdly, like... It's like that RoboCop kind of... Yeah, but, like, it gets even past that. Because RoboCop... Really, like, the worst is, like, people getting shot and then one person gets liquefied because of the whole, you know. And then, you know, <laughs> they stabbed at that 70s show dad in the throat. Yeah. But in this, it's, like, it's a lot of impaling and brutal impaling, like, ripping long, ap ripping apart. drawn out deaths. Like, people getting bisected. Like, really fucked up shit. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're having this scene. We're getting to know all these characters you know, they do the whole, oh, you know, white picket fence and stuff at home and two days to retirement. And like, you know, a good amount of them are going to die. Yeah. But just the brutality with which these characters are killed. Like Robin, they killed the shit out of Robin. Rob? Oh, not, <laughs> not Chris O'Donnell. Not Chris O'Donnell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like they had, a, they showed a dog dead under rubble. Dude, you don't kill dogs. Don't trigger me. <laughs> do not trigger me. But apparently they did that. They have that news reporter guy get, like, ripped in half. A bunch of people get ripped in half. Um, you have, even at that point, Johnny Rico gets... Uh, oh, God, yeah, in the, the leg. Yeah, the, the like, tip oh, the of the... sound design, too. Like, it, it, you feel that. Like, that just feels <clears throat> and looks fucking horrible. The Yeah, the way they shot it, too. And, like, he, like, just picks it up and, like, takes Ugh. it out of his leg. And you can hear, like, all the squishes and... The, Bones cracking. Yeah. It's fucking disgusting. Uh, he'd be dead real soon. Jake Busey. Oh, I have Jake Busey looks like Carl from Jimmy Neutron all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wait. Um, the, the most amazing thing happened. Um, 
during the winter, um, my lady and I were going through a bunch of just terrible, terrible, um, like lifetime Christmas movies. Oh God! Oh God! Just alcoholic hot chocolate and that. Oh, all the way. I was looking at that guy um, too. Yeah, what? Uh, He's notorious apparently for doing Christmas stuff. Okay, but but I think it's. No, it's not this one. It's not saving Christmas. It's not saving Christmas. There's a few. We need to vamp. We need to vamp. I need to find this. There's some down there. He kind of looks like a fucked up Bill Paxton. Doesn't sure. he? He he looks like something. Or he other. definitely looks like something. I, I will find this because it is so important. I will find him. I will find him! <laughs> There we go. Oh, God, it's perfect. Wait, how did There's you know this... to look up somebody else? Who else is in this? That's the thing. Is there it... is a Christmas movie called A Christmas Reunion, and the fact that it's called A Christmas Reunion is perfect because it's Denise Richards, Patrick Muldoon, and Jake Busey. Oh, God. Half the cast of Starship Troopers is in A Christmas Reunion. I think literally the only reason they were all cast is because it was reuniting all these characters from Starship Troopers. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> they couldn't get Casper though. Which is... Did they get Diz? No. Oh. No, she was too busy dying in everything she's in. Every Saw movie? She was in one, two, three. Well, she died in Saw and then she died in Piranha. Oh yeah, I was gonna tell you, Jake Busey is gonna be in the new Predator. What? As Gary no. Busey's No. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, I just got an actual erection. <laughs> Wait, does this movie take place in a city? I don't know. I have no idea what, what's happening with this movie. Apparently, there's a trailer coming out soon. Uh, I, I can't wait for this movie. I'm very excited. A little bit concerned there's a child in it. Yeah, but, um, I hope he does. But you know what? No, um, Shane Black handled the kid in Iron Man 3 hilariously yes i thought yeah you know dads leave don't you be a pussy yeah but like <laughs> it's just weird like you'd never think like predator let's put a kid in there you know like i feel very uncomfortable with the words predator and kid <laughs> in the same <laughs> sentence so let's move let's move back to starship troopers and you you think maybe they'll go that route <laughs> Oh God, no! Oh no! I've got some comic books in my van. And then, he, and then, like the three laser dots. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> We're gonna get letters, Dave. Oh no! Nobody sends letters anymore. I was gonna say. I thought you were gonna say nobody listens to this. <laughs> oh no. no! Nobody sends snail mail anymore. But um, one one other thing that I wanted to. Uh, point out is like when they first do the invasion like it takes 10 of them to take out one, one bug one bug yeah and then you see like a sea of arachnids in the dark just coming at them and then just like yeah. you know what we're done <laughs> they really establish the threat in this movie like they do a really good job like the bugs are scary yeah and i think it's great that like to your point like they Spend the whole movie being like, we're so fucking awesome. Look at us. We're pissed about Buenos Aires. And even like, I think the last shot before that cuts to the invasion is not Chris O'Donnell. Yeah. Um, you know, shitty Robin screaming, we're going to win. Yeah. Like they're getting yeah. the tattoos and they're yeah. all excited. And then it's like hard cut to the drop. And then they get there. And that one bug rips someone fucking part yeah. in front of them. Takes like 10 minutes to die. Yeah. And then there's like thousands of them and it's just like oh fuck like yeah these guys aren't as awesome as we thought they were like even in the beginning like they're talking about how like oh you know we've mastered space travel and you know music and art and stuff like that and you know what can bugs do and stuff like that that's like early on establishing that yeah. like they're ill prepared for the brutal force that they're gonna be yeah, encountering because you're fighting an enemy that does no cognizance or sentience in terms of like death or any yeah. of that like i don't care they're, just, they're pure instinct and yeah. they're just sharp they're sharp everywhere except for the brain bug except for the brain bug he's a yeah. pudgy pudgy testicle 
monster with a uh, poo giant of mouth. Yes. That's disgusting. There's a lot of mucus. Yeah. Yeah. But it looked right. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I just realized how, like, funny and kind of meta the line that uh, Patrick Muldoon's character says, you know, oh, you know, someone just like me is going to come and fucking kill you or whatever. And it's funny because, cool. like, like, right before the brain bug stabs him in the head and drinks oh, the brain. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like, I always thought as a kid, like, apart from their slightly different hair colors, like, he looked dangerously close to Casper Van Dien's character. No, not at all. I meant just, like, in the if you go to the most basic, like, they're both, like, chiseled, good-looking. Casper Van Dien looks like a normal Christian Slater. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> if what? christian slater's face was normal he would look like casper van dean i don't in time <laughs> i don't really know what that means <laughs> what you, like his his eyes are like his face is like scrunched in but if you just pulled it out a little bit <laughs> if you inflated <laughs> slater's face he would so look like normal. yeah he would look like casper van dean sure if you look at those pictures side to side, you'll see what I'm talking uh, about. Uh, I was just basically trying to state that I thought it would maybe kind of like a clever send up of like, they're so fucking interchangeable. Like the heroes are just interchangeable. Like nothing's like, you're just like, get another white guy with a good jawline in there. And there you go. Oh, oh, oh he's dead. Okay. It's fine. Rico's here to be the hero now. <laughs> you want a bandaid or some bacitracin, Denise Richards? You've been impaled in the shoulder. Yeah. And you're just walking around like NBD. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, the level of, like, injuries for some of the people doesn't make sense sometimes. No. Like, she should have been, like, dead. 100%. And, he, and him, too, before even the brain bug got him. Like, the way he was impaled through his, like, leg or, like... Oh. Well, I mean, to... When you get impaled, if the object stays in, usually that can stop blood flow. But that was like a, for him, it was like a thick piece right through the thigh. You yeah. think just regardless of. Well, no, with the thigh, you, the problem is the, th the femoral artery is under tension. So once it gets severed, it retreats in the leg and it will bleed there. And uh, you'll bleed out real quick if you don't tourniquet it. She would maybe be okay because it was the shoulder. I mean, it's super vascular, but if it stayed in, she might be able. I mean, I don't know. Not She'd lose the arm. Oh no! That it's RoboCop. You gotta lose. You lose gotta the lose arm. the arm. Lose. <laughs> but yeah, and that's another thing. Like the half-assed Deus Ex Machina at the end, where he, he's like, "Oh, you told me where to find her. You suggested." It's like that was the one thing in the movie. Where it was like, oh, "Shut the fuck up! <laughs> this is bullshit." Yeah, it was a little, a little contrived. Yeah, it was a little dumb. And, it, like, it's a whole, like, even that whole part where it's like, you know what? We shouldn't do it. Fuck her. She's dead. Great. That works with everything that he's led up into this movie. Yeah. But, oh, but now suddenly he has a heart or whatever. You know, maybe that was, like, the small amount of individualism or humanity kind of breaking through. But apparently it's not because it's... It's Neil Patrick Harris telling Casper Van Dien where she is so they can capture the brain bug. Oh my god, that's so depressing. Yeah. I just realized that that's <laughs> literally it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is. Because he, he, even Neil Patrick Harris said, he's like, we had to take the chance to kill a bunch of people so we can capture the thing. Uh... Yeah, so this movie is just <laughs> utterly depressing, but on surface level, it's like, it makes you feel like, yeah. yeah. But then you think about it a little bit more and you're like, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well well yeah listen it's it's no starship troopers two no or starship troopers three or four or four or five what yeah it's 2017 one came out no that's the fourth one no there's i saw five on there go look it up oh god no there was two animated ones after there's three two animated ones? yeah after three I think I think the fifth one came out this year or is coming out. Yeah, Trader of Mars. That's what the one I was talking about. Oh my god, Invasion was before Trader of Mars. Jeez. Uh so some of the did, wait, what? Dizzy's back? How? Maybe a flashback or something. 
I don't know. I'm not saying it. Yeah. So something that I found really interesting, and I wish Hollywood would stop. I I'm almost not. I'm almost shocked that there hasn't been a remake of Starship Troopers. Not that it is a movie that necessarily screams remake me. It's more just Hollywood has just been going through Verhoeven's filmography and just remaking all of it. They did Only RoboCop. The, and they did Total Recall. And they did Total Recall. And both of those movies totally fucking missed the point of why those movies are good. Was Total Recall like a big hit? No. Okay, so I was going to say, it's like if it was, then... And RoboCop wasn't a big hit either. No. No. So, yeah, it's like, why wouldn't they make... I think it's because... No, that wouldn't work either, because RoboCop has, like, a ton of... Has way more install. Like, people know what RoboCop is. Yes, and it also has... It has... I think the second one was sort of successful. Yeah. But the third the third one wasn't. But then you have, like, the TV show stuff. Oh, yeah. I forget that that was a thing. Yeah, I remember seeing those when I was growing up. And they have... They have... Um, it. I don't know. It just feels more like, okay, we get this. Like, this is more relatable in a way. Like, it's more like we can understand it. We can take it. Yeah, you as can what package and sell RoboCop a lot easier. Yeah. I don't really know how you, you can't do really Starship Troopers without the satire, which or is, Total Recall. Well, yeah, they did that without the satire, and exactly. But it's like, I think maybe they won't remake it. It's because it feels too cult like. You know, yeah. like it's easy to do that for a horror movie. Yeah, because they're cheap. Because is... they're cheap to do whatever. God, this... I can't imagine how much money fucking Starship Troopers must have cost to make. Well, we can always look we it up. We have the internet. We have technology. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think they would do it just because, like, even, like, 2017, they put out that animated thing. It's like, there is a market for it. It's just not big enough and nobody cares about it. Yeah, so it says it costs about $100 million to make. And that's in like 1997. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Man, they must and have... and it looks it looks pretty good, like it looks really believable. It doesn't look like a cheap like. No, I would say you could see every fucking dollar on the screen. Yeah, for for the time. I mean, I guess a lot of people if like just watching it now, like they can kind of be like, "Oh, this looks like kind of goofy or whatever." It looks a little dated, like when they're doing the laser tag thing, or where the scene gets where the guy gets blown up. Well, not blown up, but his head gets, his head <laughs> gets ruptured. But like but you bullets. see, but you see like the targets or whatever. They kind of just look like cheap cutouts or whatever. They just kind of fire at. Yeah, like even the obstacle course. It's like for the time, it's like it's really good and it fits the tone of the movie or whatever. But I think people now would kind of see through the seams or whatever. You know what I mean? Listen, not every movie can be Terminator Two and. Jurassic Park. No. Those movies just fucking still. For most of the effects, they hold up. Not all of them, but the good majority of them hold up. The spaceship stuff looks pretty pretty cool. They're navigating through like the... Listen, I believe these the enemies lights. more than I believe fucking Steppenwolf. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, this movie... Puts that to shame. Really does. Like, Justice League does not look anywhere near as good as Starship Troopers. That's saying a lot that, because it shot. It looks like it's a TV movie for most of it. Yeah, I would say with the, the lighting and stuff, like yeah. it, it's almost like staged, it's like flat. That. Yeah, yeah. And it just it everything just adds to what it is. Yeah, it's just a parody. It's just well, it's not parody. It's satire. Yeah, but it, but it, the way it chooses to satirize is to just be be, which is uh. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's scary how many people watch this and it, that just goes over their head completely. Yeah. It's like you don't like you don't see it. It's like, no, I don't see it. what are you saying? It's like oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's how fascism rises, bruh. Yeah. They even have a a an African American lady 
leader, replacing the old white man at the end. Yeah, because, you know... The old white man fucked up. <laughs> he, he done goofed. Yeah. He, he's bad. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like a commentary on today's film world with Black Panther reigning supreme as the best. Yeah, but she's still a fascist leader. <laughs> like, she's still, like, out. Yeah. She and, just has a better battle strategy. Yeah, and, and Wakanda's still a monarchy, brah. Yeah. Not everything's perfect. No, I'm kidding. Doesn't make any sense. It's fine. No. Wakanda forever. <laughs> Hashtag Wakanda forever. Look at those. But, um. It's what are those? Oh, what are those? <laughs> God, can you tell we're white? <laughs> Look at those! <laughs> That's not the thing. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Stay awake? It's woke. Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I saw it months ago. A month ago? Not months ago. A month ago. Singular. Singular. Well, we're in April, so technically two months ago. Jumanji is still out. What? Yeah. Oh, somebody pointed this out to me. I didn't see Jumanji. Um, so, you know, I don't like to disparage movies I haven't seen. But I can safely say without seeing it that there's surely no way it's better than the original right because it has a better metacritic score than the original and i'm just like spit all over me bro. i'm sorry robin williams is <laughs> turning in his grave right now oh my god uh i saw unsane oh that's the iphone movie right? yeah the iphone movie, it, it it looked pretty good like it, it was it really? was a fun like b horror movie <laughs> it's the white girls get out <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a clever joke, but no, that that's it. That's it. <laughs> Wait, isn't the white girls get out just the step for wives? Yeah, but this is like literally like it's kind of close to it. All right, wrong. Yeah, it, it's a good movie to see. It's yeah. it's pretty brutal, and because it's all shot on an iPhone, it makes it like this weird voyeuristic kind of thing that adds to the creepiness of what's happening. Right, so it's not just like a gimmick, like it actually adds to the context of... Uh... Maybe that wasn't the attempt, but that's how I saw it. All right. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I can could, I could, I could get behind that. And there's points in the movie where it probably, it feels like that. There's like scenes where she's like, the camera's like, the iPhone is like far back, like in bushes and stuff. And like you see her eating lunch and stuff like that. And it's like, it's just like... Is there, it makes you feel like a little... Is there eh. a seven-minute scene where she eats a pie? No. Well, it's not art, then. Uh, but there's, like, this, this great lighting stuff. There's this point where these two characters, they're in, like, this, um, like, the padded, the isol... What? Isol I was going to say isolation chamber, but that's not what it is. A padded room? Yeah. Well, no, like, what's another word for it? Is it, like, a... Uh crazy person so they don't hurt themselves padded room yeah yeah just padded room oh all right well you know what fuck me then i'm thinking of something different then whatever but anyway there's a scene in that and there's like one or two lights and like sometimes like a character would walk to a corner and then the other character would walk up to them but like you can't see their face or anything it's just this blacked out face and you just see like their body and it's just like creepy and it's like this plays really well it's it's a really good movie the soundtrack's a little strange especially the open it's like this weird hip-hop beat music at the beginning and the end that's an interesting choice yeah i don't know why they put that in there but other than that if it's still out there go see unsane it's kind of creepy i liked it I do not have any recommendations on this week's episode. Yes, you do. I do? Yeah. Go see Starship Troopers. Well, that's a given. I mean, really, we recommended it when we told them we were watching it on the first episode. And then we released a mini episode with us talking about Death of Stalin. Is that out? No, not yet. Oh, so. Oh, God. We need to re-record the last uh, sign-off. We never did that. Oh, I just told you to just hodgepodge, like. Yeah, I know, but we only had one episode, so there wasn't enough material for me to create anything that made any kind of sense. <laughs> well, just like a weird, like, one minute, like, ah, whatever. We'll probably do that after this right now, I guess. Yeah. Okay, we'll cool. A peek behind the curtain. The Iron Curtain? Uh... Uh... Oh, my 
hate myself. So can we? That's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are we going to do next week? Uh, who who suggested Starship Troopers? Was it you or me? It was me because you shockingly suggested Highlander. Oh, okay. Can we pick? You know what? I'm gonna pull a, I'm gonna pull up Clancy Brown's IMDb. And we're just going to see what's on there. Well, I was going to suggest something else because coming over here, something else popped into my head oh. that I think that you really wanted to rewatch and that I, a movie that I love, I showed you a long time ago. You kind of fell asleep during it, but you said you loved it. I think we should watch The Guard. I fell asleep during it, but I love it. I didn't fall asleep during it. You fell asleep during some of it. Definitively did not fall asleep. It was, but we also did a two for that night, didn't we? Didn't we watch something else and then the guard? Like it was maybe, like a long night. Maybe. Um, I'm down to watch the guard again. Okay. I I do love me some Ren and Cleese, and it's actually probably one of my uh, favorite roles of his because he's just so very strange in it. He's so goofy and like lovable and like it's just so weird it's, and it's strange. A weird 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 movie all right so it's settled watch mad eye moody solve crimes with war machine against sinestro wow you pick you pick that one oh and oh shit he's in it go keep going keep going look oh game of thrones guy yeah game of thrones guy but um but yeah, no, I love just describing all movies based solely on superheroes that people have played because it's getting to the point where you can describe almost any movie using superhero characters. It's kind of sad. It's it's a little sad. I mean, let's see who else. Wait, what other hero would you would you have picked for Mark Strong? I was going to say his character from uh, Kick-Ass or his character from uh, from Kingsman. I was gonna say Kingsman. Moriarty. No, not Moriarty. He, he was wasn't Moriarty. Moriarty. He was um. He was what's his face? Oh, he was the bad guy in Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. Remember. But I don't know. I don't fucking Blackwood. Black. Who the fuck knows that? I don't fucking know that. Well, that's fair, I suppose. So, the guard. Yeah. No, oh, I, okay. I, I, well, I was just I, waiting I, on confirmation there. All right. Jesus all right, Christ. You, you heard it here first. First, meh, meh. You heard it first here, folks. Yep. For our next episode, we will be watching the 2011 comedy crime thriller, The Guard, starring Brendan Gleeson, Don Cheadle, and Mark Strong. Just like a donkey fucking a hippopotamus. It's party time. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> On the rocks out. <laughs> My name is Paul Danina Braun. And I'm Dave. Stay classy, motherfuckers. And watch movies. 